Hey guys and uh, welcome back. I got the rest of the uh, seal kit in for the 56 Ebenrude uh, 10 horse outboard. So that's the parts we were waiting for. And uh, between the last video and this uh, video that we're putting together, I was able to do some homework and uh, talk with a bunch of uh, different sources. And this guy, the original failure was the water pump was not spinning. And this guy was the wrong one. The ID, that brass ID is incorrect. And because it was slopping around on a pin so much, it was allowed to chew itself apart and uh, finally to the point where the, the impeller wasn't spinning at all and the pin was just spinning around. You can see where it galled all the, way, all the way around. So we do have the new one. You can see how it does not flop on there. It's a nice, uh, not pressure fit, but uh, has no slop in it neither. And uh, the answer to the million dollar question of what holds the shaft from falling in, if you watched a previous video, let me get this off of here. And drop everything on the floor. All right. I had a concern, that pin right there, you can see when you put the pin in, it kind of rides on that plate and that's what holds it at that level. And everybody was going by, it's missing a sir clip in the bottom, it's missing this, it's missing that. Went to my local uh, uh, boat, uh, repairman and while I was trying to find parts for another outboard he said uh, that's the way it is if the pin rides on there and that's it the shaft is meant to float up and down and yes the pin does touch the plate uh, as odd as it is that is how it's constructed and there's nothing wrong so we tore the bot into the bottom end and I looked to make sure that there was no issues going on inside there didn't really see anything but we did have a little bit of water come out when we took the drain plugs out hence why we have the seal kit so I'm gonna get you guys set up on a stand we're gonna go see about changing some of these seals out and reassembling this baby and see if we can get it back together and uh, pump the water through it so the one that's the biggest pain in the ass to do is gonna be the shift rod bushing which is down down inside there so I wanted to go pull that out, but if you look on the rod, there's a bunch of carbon already on there, so that doesn't want to slide through. So I'm going to make some noise. We'll go clean that up on the wire wheel. So it's pretty much gutted as far as any hardware is in it. And give it a quick bath. So the one part that's an issue is this is where that shift rod goes through. The one we just kind of pulled out of there, cleaned up and pulled out. So there's a brass plug or bushing on top. Under the brass bushing is a rubber seal and like a, uh, I forget the name of it off the top of my head again right now, like a neoprene. It's not neoprene. It's a semi-hard washer of material <laughs> leave it at that uh, the problem is getting this out it's kind of pressed in from the top and I don't know if you guys are even able to see all the way down inside there but way down inside there is where the other end of it and somebody sent me a link to it and the trick I guess to getting that removed from there is you go from this side and you take a tap and you run the tap down I think it was 5 16th 24 thread you run a tap in it somewhat and then you take the tap out you put a bolt in it and that now plugs the hole for you and then you tap it out from the other side with a rod so we're gonna go give that a shot and see how it goes all right so I got this conglomeration two pair of ice grips on a quarter inch extension and there's the tap that'll fit into there let's see if we can get a couple threads started and then shove a bolt in its place and it's not like anything touches that brass really the brass it's not a um, important as far as like a machine surface I guess what I'm trying to say Let's 
see. Looks like some nice threads in here to me. So let's run that guy in there. Oh, I hate gloves. Got my mandate on. I already whacked my finger on something. Got that out of the way early. All right, so that should be enough to get us from the other side. Let's see what it looks like. And you can kind of see the bolt down in there. So we'll set up. I'll try to get some kind of uh, something, something to drive that through and see if we can get it out of there. Right, so I got it flipped over. Bolt's going in from that side. I got a piece of brass rod. Let's see. That should fit right down inside there. Let's see if we could tap that guy out of there. There we go. And there's that O-ring. And there's the bushing. I was under the influence that it was supposed to be two pieces. That might be two pieces on the end there. We should be able to take that back off. That's how it was driven in. So I'm gonna go do a little bit of homework. I'm gonna go grab my computer. You guys mailed me a uh, a PDF file on this thing, how it goes together. And uh, I think it's supposed to have that, may or may not. Again, different years, they, they may have tried different things also, but it's gonna be, that guy's the replacement, and I thought that guy probably would have went right along with it, which kind of looks correct. But I just don't know if it's gonna be that way or that way. We'll find out. So all that guy gets is just the O-ring. There is no um, other piece in there from what I looked up. And that's the way it came apart too. So we will do the same for reassembly. So tap that guy down to the bottom. Let's get ourselves a Q-tip. Make sure there's no debris in there. And I have some marine grease. Marine grease just doesn't wash out as easy. So lube that up. Use that for the rest of it. And the bushing has a slight taper on one side. Let's see if we can get that. Let's see if we can drop that down inside there without losing it. And I got a brass rod that's a little larger. See if we can tap that. Sounds like it's home to me. And that should be that guy. Right, we want to jump on this one next. I don't know if we could tap that up in the back side or we're, or we're just going to claw at it and get it out of there. Don't think. Yeah, I think we're just going to have to pop it up. See if the big old screwdriver will do it. I gotta put it in a vise to hold it. Let's see if that's a little better. And that sucker's in there, huh?
That looks to be a way bigger seal than that guy. That's all I gotta say. It does not look like it's the same kind of uh, the rubber down below is like a half inch thick. That's not a half inch thick. I'm gonna try uh, collapsing the walls on it. It doesn't want to come out. So maybe we can um, You know what I'm trying to do. I already took the seal part of it out of there. That popped out. That was that part of it. lifting up on it now so it got a little smaller I don't want to damage the edge here that's what I'm trying to watch out for there it goes. I want to bridge it with something you guys are in the way you want to stand over there <laughs> hold on It's out of there. Right, let's go clean that group up. Tap that one in there. That's cleaned out of there. Let's put a little bit of lube. Help the seal in. It won't hurt. I know got a lot of guys are gonna say, why don't you put uh you know run a screw in it, pull up the screw. I just sometimes I've done that in the past and I, I've kind of galled and nicked some of the uh, aluminum. Get a little bit of a little bit of that. So let's go a little bit more because when the shaft goes in. I want that shaft going in dry. It's your rubber. Alright, what do we got? I think we got one on the bottom to do. These two are good. I think we have one down below to do yet. So what I have is on the front of the the gear stack there, which is gonna be that seal. Which is gonna be the one we just threw away and then an o-ring on the side so we can do the same i like to be able to tap it from the back side if i can i'm gonna try that i'm gonna try setting it in the vise and try tapping it with a brass rod see if i can push it out and then uh, we'll tap the new one in let's try with a little brass rod first <laughs> trying to avoid you guys. Hold on. You see? You can see. Let's try the, the sharp end of the deal here. Move it a little. Let's rotate it. Let's just say they weren't going to fall out, that's for sure. That's what kind of damage we're doing. <laughs> same as the other one. Might end up doing the same thing. I may just uh, try bending the center of it in and getting it out of there. It looks like it's trying to put up a, a tad of a fight so that's what we're gonna do ready money shot 
<clears throat> out of the hole. Good. Where's my grease? I'll give it a little apply liberally. And where's our new one? There's our new one. Probably take it out of the vise. And shake you guys. Hold on. I know. You're wobbling. You guys. Look. Right there. Tap that guy down. Uh, do I have a socket? I should probably go for a socket a little larger because you want to push on the outside edge. You really don't want to be pushing on that. Um, you know, all the drag is between here and that lip right there. So you want to try to push as close to that as possible so you don't damage the inner part. I'm even sh I'm shifting the socket to the outer edge too to try to help influence that. I think it's home though. Yeah, it's home. A little bit in there. That's all going to be full of gear oil anyway, but we'll give it a, uh, a preemptive strike, you know, before we kill it. Running it dry. Let's get that out of there. Stab yourself in the fingers. Let's give a little of that over there. Pop the new one on. And we'll put a bit on the outside of that. For when it goes back in the case. Doesn't quite us. I think we might have them all. So the only thing we really have left is that bottom seal. This one, kind of rope seal. Change that out. I'm going to clean this surface up with the wire wheel. Wash this out. This is where that rubber O-ring sits here. And then this one takes over from the top and the bottom. I'm going to clean that out. I don't know if I'm going to add anything to this or not. I may go and give it a little bit of uh, the right stuff, that black material. Especially like right between here and here, I would suspect there's a, a slight possibility where it can leak. So I may uh, add a little material here or I might just do over the whole thing. I'm not sure yet. Yeah, so it's kind of screwing up a little bit. I had myself going. I put it together and I had this facing the other direction. And I'm like, this gear is slopping back and forth. I'm like, they're supposed to both be in contact with the gear down below at all times. And the shaft's supposed to spin free. And uh, all of a sudden, I said, oh yeah. <laughs> That's why, because that guy's upside down and it has a, a thrust face, a brass bronze thrust faced right there that as the pressure goes against it, it has something to push against and of course this side was just the seal I'm like well it wouldn't be riding against the seal would it and then finally I uh, got rid of my dumb moment and cured it so anyway this is the fit the shift lever this rod goes down below and uh, when you spin the gear I don't know if I could spin it or not you see how both of them are spinning in opposite directions so right now it's in neutral nothing's happening and then when you shift the shifter rod, it kicks one direction. Now it's locked into that gear. And you go the other direction, it locks into that gear. And then that depends, that, that gives you the forward and the reverse. And then of course in the middle, now the prop is just freewheeling and it's not doing anything. So that's how that setup works. And it has a pin right here. It's not in yet. And that pin goes in the you assemble it all together see if this is going to work see that right there that's where that pin sits that is the cradle that it pivots off of when you push the rod up and down 
it rocks this one way to the other. So we gotta get our seal on there, get a little bit of goop on it. Actually, it looks like that. Get our seal on there and put it back together. And I gotta change your battery. Yeah, that's what I ended up doing. I ended up, the new seal that I put on there kind of just lays floppily in there. So I, I filled the groove with the right stuff first and then put the seal in it, gave a little goop there and a little goop there just to kind of bridge between where the o-ring is and where that junction meets and i left those guys just a little proud i don't know if you can see it a little proud off of each end now i'll probably say the trickiest part is going to make sure that we get that guy into there and i should be able to grab the shift rod and feel it now let's see if we're going one direction we're locked in yeah. All right. Now let's shift the other way. And now it's going backwards. Okay. So I got it. Because there's like no detent in there, you know? It's just the detent's up top where the shifter is on the, the power head that holds it in those three positions. So I think we're good. We can go button that guy up. We'll flip it over. And uh, we'll look down to the other side of it. We'll start assembling the pump and we get it all back together. And that's tight and it squeezed out just a little bit of the material. And that's kind of what I want to see. You don't want to overdo it where it's flogging up the inwards. That should be fine. All right. We'll leave the prop off till later. We don't need to. Uh, we just make sure I have. Stop shaking. Make sure I got neutral. I got neutral. All right, let's uh, get the water pump on. Okay, <laughs> that little pin holds this shaft from dropping down further. There's no clip holding this up. I, you would think that this would want to elevate up just a little like that and not touch the plate, but that's what it does. It's how it's designed, it's lasted. 50 something years what's this thing 56 so what's that going uh, 59 years old and it's going back that way so i thought there was something wrong with it that's why i took the whole bottom end apart this guy it looks like one side has a little bit more of a recess than the other we're going to make it so that it sits down as low as possible on that and that's it I do believe when it runs, the shaft probably floats and does kind of come up off the plate. But from everybody I spoke with, that's how it is. I didn't design it. <laughs> I'm not going to modify it. It's been working, so I'm going to leave well enough alone. So with that, we are going to just go with that. I know I didn't say anywhere that I read, but I put a little bit of marine grease on the tips of each one of the impellers and just a little around inside there just so that when we're rotating it together uh, ease of assembly will be a little better I also put a, a marker line here to help you know the orientation now the thing is you got to spin it kind of while you're doing it and hopefully the little blades will kind of tuck themselves into the pump as you're going Okay, so we got three screws to put back in there, and that should make for those guys. Let's see if we can get that bottom plate lined up too. I think I got it. You can go one direction, you go the wrong direction. The the blades, what they're doing is they're laying over one direction. And then you can't back them up. You back them up, they're going to try to affect themselves. So if you look at the old one, you can see what I'm talking about, how they're all kind of leaning one direction. So it's doing that when you're trying to put it together. And if you try to go backwards, now you're trying to jam them, trying to go against the tide. Let's tighten them up. So the fun part is you're going to try to get all three of these things up in their hole. Started. 
the same time, the biggest one I'm worried about is the water feed, because that's the one that's hardest to see. Probably put it in gear. And now I could turn the Not sure which one's fighting me. Let's see if I can poke down in there with a little screwdriver and move that. I think I got, I think the tube is in. Just a couple of love taps. Close. I'm trying to poke around that there's that that copper tube, which is the water tube that goes up and feeds the power head. That has to fit into a rubber boot, but it's got a taper on the end of it. That guy, getting that guy started. I'm gonna try putting a little bit of lube on that and uh, I'm gonna save you guys from the struggle, but that's what I'm gonna work on. So the trick was to put the prop on and once I put the prop on it, I was able to uh, get the shaft to go into gear. So now I'm just tightening up the, the shift coupler. Neutral. <laughs> there we go. Looks like it's off a little bit. Why is I wonder if I have to rotate that a little. Maybe that's Kind of questioning neutral there a little bit. I should be able to spin that without the engine turning over. I wonder if the cog on the bottom, like I said, is um, not in the right location. I am going to take that bottom back off. I'm not confident about that. Let's make a mess. This is no gear oil in it. wonder if I should put it, it's in reverse, so I should probably put it it's in reverse in 
versus the front one. It's kind of spring loaded. Neutral. I'm wondering if the rod was supposed to go the other way. Don't know. Not sure if that is supposed to come up from this side. I don't know if it makes any difference. It seems like it's exact mirror image. I got a little bit of homework. Something's not right. So what I did is I put grease on the pin. I just wasn't sure. It just kept feeling kind of wacky. Then I put it back on. You can kind of see where the grease ran into it that I was getting. I was getting full insertion. <laughs> I think what's happening is maybe the engine standing up like it is. Gravity is taking the slack out of it and allowing it to flop into one of the gears. So I think we should put it back together, lay it down, see if it does what it's supposed to do. That's my guess. Uh, fortunately, it's not that hard to get to. Also, what might be is that because I had the shift linkage apart, I'm just out of the window of where it needs to ratchet in, and that's adjustable up by the shift lever itself. We could take care of that up there. But, uh, let's see. I know you're kind of too close, but I got you in front of me. So right now it's in neutral, but you can kind of hear it hitting just a little bit, right? And if I bump it just a little, right there, now it's neutral and reverse. So it needs to go a little more towards reverse, but there is an adjustment right here. You can see you can loosen that up and you can actually turn, change this where it clicks into a bunch of different locations. So I'm going to do that see if I can find a happy medium where I spit it in neutral. It's not making any clicking noise. I think that's my issue. And that's probably from me earlier prying and yanking on it or I could probably loosen those up and there's probably a little bit of slop that they extend and, and retreat a little bit and it's just not in the exact same place it was before. All right, so I adjusted it right there. Now it's in neutral. Prop spins, makes no noise. Put in the drive. Locks in the drive. Reverse. Back to neutral. I think we got it. All we need is the goopy stuff and we're all set. So, kind of put it in the bottom. You keep squeezing until it comes out the top. Then you put the top screw in. And again, it's kind of like holding your thumb. Whoops. Holding your thumb over a straw. And doing it that way gets rid of the air pockets. Because you fill them from bottom to top. You do it the other way around. It has a tendency not to want to creep around the gears. It's that. Get out of the bottom. Full of goop. Nothing left but the test drive now. So it's outside. Getting ready to hook her up. I already plopped it in the stand. Give that a click. I gotta prime the tank until that button starts to get hard. Here we go. We're good there. Let me prop you in the stand. We are on start choke. This one. That one's choke. Should be neutral. You guys are sliding around. Let's back up just a hair. Can you see everything now? How's that? No choke? <laughs> you can sweat it. Uh, wait, it was way off. 
There we go. It was on stop. Yeah, I had to handle it in the wrong spot. We're spitting out water. up a little bit. Nice. Now it's pumping like you should. Let's see if it slow it down a little bit, we'll put her in gear. Kind of cold. Forward. Reverse. Forward. <laughs> Neutral. I got it all wacky now. I got it all flooded. But uh, it's working. It's got to warm it up some. And then you, the reason why the, the high and the low are out here so you can tweak it for when it's like kind of farting and coughing like that. And you do that on the fly. So let me uh, warm her a little bit and uh, do one more time. Kind of warmed it up and dialed it in a little bit. Hey guys, pretty good. I think we're ready to rock and roll. I'm gonna drain out of the power head. I mean, it looks alright. I don't see a ton of oil in the water. Of course, there's some crud because it's the way they operate, but yeah, nice little motor. And yeah, probably in for a hundred bucks the cost of it. Uh, it was 40 bucks. It was 45 for the uh, seal kit and another roughly 20 bucks for the uh, impeller and the plate. And it's a 56. So what's that, 61 years old? Something like that? Good for another. Whatever that is. <laughs> My math is probably showing right now. So with that, guys, I think we're going to go shut her down. I think now we can say that that is a uh, true survivor that is uh, ready to run the open seas again. Uh, I'm probably going to sell it. I'm not going to hold on to it. We don't have an option for it, but I do not want to ship it anywhere. Just keep that in mind. And with that, guys, I want to thank all you guys for kind of hanging out in the garage with me, doing some wrenching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. See ya. And just a little teaser of a video coming up.